Hey there, welcome to Lightworkers Academy, episode one. Uh, I am your host, Brian Besco, here at Twisted Sage Studios. Um, gosh, thank you all for being here today. Not sure why we are doing this uh, program right here. I was just called to um, offer this here just a few days ago. Um, so basically, we're going to be going through all the different attunements, activations, the processes, um, you know, step by step to get to us, um, to get us to a point to where we can begin to, uh, you know, I'm not even going to put any hard parameters to outline this course. Basically, I just wish to share some of the activations, attunements, and some of the non-physical tools that we utilize um, daily. So anyway, there's no, I have an itinerary for this, uh, for the next three classes, for this class and the next two classes, but um, gosh, I do not have a mission statement or why we are truly doing this other than just really felt guided to share this. And this is all work that we do, um, gosh, either that I teach in workshops or that we do during 50 Questions Fridays, which we do, um, gosh, probably two or three times a month. Uh, we have 50 Questions Fridays. And um, gosh, if you are here live, thank you for joining us. And if you are here watching after the fact, we are going to be creating a sacred space here to where does not matter when you watch this video that you'll be included in this space. Now, these are powerful fields that we work in when we all come together and we go into the heart and we consciously create this field, this space. When we do this in 50 Questions Fridays, it's amazing because I can just feel when people join the group that shifts start to just simply take place. Um, so, Anyway, no huge expectations, but just be open through through whatever comes your way. This entire space that we create is all heart-based, and it is always your soul that is in charge. So anyway, without further ado, let's begin by going into the heart space and setting the field. Um, you know, our sacred container that we are all going to be in every time we join this. Um, and if you are here live, I'm just jumping over here to check our chat side because we have a lot of people from all over. Thank you all for being here. Um, gosh, Istanbul, Ohio, Australia, Denver, North Carolina, Minnesota. A lot of you are in that nice negative temperatures that we're in today for our shortest day of the year. Uh, BC, Ontario, Canada. So throughout the uh, the next hour here, if we if you have questions, please do drop them into the questions tab pertaining to the work that we have that we're doing here today. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with going into the heart space. So the sacred space, the heart, there's actually brain cells within the heart. It is where we see our light, our soul's fire within the heart. And all beings throughout the cosmos, that's where I see their soul spark. It's how it presents to me is their light is in the heart. So what we do to move into the sacred space of the heart is what my sister Brenda calls the Trinity breath. Actually, it was the elders three who my sister channeled for years um, that brought this Trinity breath into being. And it's similar to um, a lot of the other work that's out there. Um, you know, it's simply taking the breath from earth, taking the breath from creation, bringing them both together within the heart. And then that moves your consciousness from the head back into the heart space. So for this exercise, we simply see our consciousness as a little ball of light about the size of a marble. And we see that it usually rests right in behind the pineal gland. And it looks out our physical eyes. It sees the world separate from us. When our consciousness is here, we're influenced by emotions, 
programs, beliefs. We're influenced by the ego, the mind, and we're influenced by all kinds of energies that we perceive all the time. So when we move our consciousness from here back into the sacred space of the heart, it truly is a sacred space. The sacred space is uh, its a field that only allows in a certain bandwidth of vibration, of frequency, heart-based higher consciousness. Again, it is where the soul sits. So when you move from the head into the heart space, you're not being influenced by all of the other things. So here we go. This is a very simple technique. We do it in three breaths. The simpler, the better. So as you move through any of these techniques that we present in this class, make it your own, but make it simple. We've simplified things as much as we can because the simpler keeps us in the heart or the more complicated keeps us more in the head. Okay, so going into that sacred space of the heart, closing your eyes if you wish and putting your attention to your physical heart. Within your heart, you find your light, your soul's fire. Using your imagination, visualization, or simply intentions. Imagine connecting heart to heart with the earth. Within the earth, within Gaia, is that crystal sun, that heart of the earth. Simply imagining connecting your heart to the heart of the earth. Breathing in that light, allowing that light to flow up through the feet into every cell of the body, up into the heart. Next, from the heart space, imagine connecting to you, soul, or you could call it source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. By the end of this class, we wish to see you as creator. So connecting to that higher light of creation, of you, of God, breathing in that light into the heart. And that is our second breath. The third breath is breathing in the light of earth and the light of creation, both together at the same time. As you breathe in those two supportive energies into the heart, it moves you into that heart space. Now on our Twisted Sage YouTube channel, we have 10 years worth of videos of going into the heart space. We do it in everything that we do before we do any energy work um, in your daily life, before you make any decisions, before you go to bed, when you wake up, when you get, um, when you get thrown off balance, go into the heart space. So with the videos that we have online, you can do a lot of journey work within the heart. But the heart is so important in everything that we do. It is the space that takes us out of that old matrix of influence. And it brings us into center, into that connection with our light. because your light is the most powerful thing in creation. All right, so from that sacred space of the heart, seeing this entire group, all of these people, and everyone who will ever watch this video, we create this container, this sacred space, where as we stand in our heart, we imagine connecting heart to heart, soul to soul, to all beings that are here in the highest and greatest good to witness, to hold space. Because not only are you here, but those who walk with you are here. Those who walk with those who walk with you in the highest and best good are all here holding space. 
So we invite in all of those in the highest and best good for you to help hold this space of co-creation. Beautiful. And I hope you can feel this space and all of the beings here to witness. Beautiful. All right. So we won't go into a lot of story in detail. There is a lot of details and story behind everything that we do here from the sacred space of the heart um, to every one of the attunements and activations that we do today. And so basically that's why I was kind of guiding you towards our YouTube channel to look more into the different journeys that you can do from the sacred space of the heart. So the Trinity breath is what, um, what the elders three that my sister channels, my sister Brenda. Um, and I'll mention Brenda here off and on. If, if you followed us, um, or if you followed me here with this, or if you follow Twisted Sage, um, you have heard of Brenda. Uh, Brenda Snow, she is my sister, uh, blood sister in the physical. And she is one of the mm, most heart centered heart-based people I have ever met on the planet in that she is here versus being here. The human has the propensity to go down rabbit holes of belief. And we, we perceive the world through our emotions and experiences, which aren't always a true to life thing when we are in the head. And so the human is hardwired to begin to create a reality around it based on things that it perceives and usually has an emotional content to it. So like with Brenda, she is so much in the heart space that she's not here getting taken down those different rabbit holes of belief. Um, when you're in your heart space, it is where you are grounded with the earth. You're connected with creator God, you, and you're in your heart. So we call this the Trinity breath. And again, you can make this Trinity breath your own by simply doing it in one breath if you wish, or having a key word for yourself. And how do you notice if you are in the heart space? Well, when we just did this meditation, I hope that you could feel that shift so that when you opened your eyes, everything was more peace, more calm, um, maybe more clarity to everything that you see. And then start to feel into that whole process of you being in the heart space. And you might note that you don't have as much of the thought processes going on or the emotions or the reactions, the emotional reactions that you have. So being in the heart space is an exercise, is something that we continue to do because as you step out into the world, you get cut off in traffic, you pop out of the heart space, um, anything that will cause a reaction, emotional reaction, brings you back up into the head. So we will do the Trinity breath often throughout this entire process, um, throughout this entire uh, workshop. So let's see, next we're gonna do the sacred heart activation. I kind of have an itinerary set up here, as you saw when we first got here. Um, I don't even do this for my workshops that I teach. Usually I just kind of wing it. So today we do have uh, certain activations and attunements that we'll be covering as well as the next uh, couple classes here. And so at the end of today, I'm going to give a kind of concept of light anchor, which is really a phenomenal tool to utilize which are anchors of light, the homes of light. But before we get there, we're going to be in class three, we're going to do a lot of activations and attunements in order to be able to hold that space easier in a more refined, clarified space. Um, 
So today for the activations and attunements. An attunement is simply kind of like um, you get a Reiki attunement. Um, it is something that is there that you simply bring your awareness to. That is what an attunement basically is, is you becoming aware of a field, a frequency, a concept, um, and a third tool. And so the attunement is, um, yeah, that's exactly what the attunement is. This is becoming aware of a certain energetic structure, let's say. Now, an activation is when we come in and we invite your soul in to reactivate what we're going to do next is the sacred heart. Now, we have the sacred space of the heart, which is where we moved our consciousness into the physical heart. That is a sacred space. And again, um, gosh, I go into detail describing that sacred space of the heart and the different torsion fields that come out of the heart and all of that through many of our other classes, workshops, and and uh, online videos with the sacred so that's the sacred space of the heart now the sacred heart is that golden flaming heart it's uh, it's what you always see Jesus and Mary depicted with but beyond religion um, the sacred heart is is um, it's something that we all carry sorry I'm distracted looking over here and making sure we don't have any questions uh, let's see oh so are we having some sound issues here today I'll bring the microphone closer we do have um, Something with electronics, okay. I want to make sure that we're clear here first before we continue on. Uh, no, we do not have a questions tab on here today. Uh, we're going to keep questions here on the, the chat side today. Um, is everybody still having issues with their sound? Okay, sounds good. All right, yeah, because we do have some fans and things running in the background and heaters because um, here in the studio, it's, uh, gosh, it's a balmy 60 degrees here because it's, um, you know, it's like negative 10 outside. <laughs> so anyway, um, hopefully we, okay, no issues there for hearing. All right, well, I'll keep the microphone close. Okay, so the sacred heart is the trifold gold flame heart that you always see Jesus and Mary depicted with, but it's beyond religion. The sacred heart is something that is, it's, it's related to the human. Now, when we go through and do the sacred heart activation, and again, we, we have all the stories and everything, not only on our website, but on videos of, of how this whole sacred heart, how we stumbled upon it and, and that activation. But it is the soul that comes in and activates the sacred heart for you. So we're going to go ahead and just step through this activation process. And once we go through the activation, um, I will tell you a little bit about, you know, what you can do with this golden fire and things that we're seeing that it is doing for us. So this golden fire, it's, um, again, it is your soul that comes in and does the activation. So let's just jump into the meditation right now and we can talk about it more afterwards. So again, putting your attention to the physical heart and imagine connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light and energy of the earth into the heart. Connecting heart to heart to source, soul, creator, God. Breathe in that light and that energy. We're simply just making that connection with you. This third breath, breathing in both the energy of earth, of creation, bringing them both together within you. So I see it as you become a light, you become a column of light that is grounded and connected. And that light flows from the earth up through you, through your heart to creation. And the light flows from creation through you and into the earth. So you become this conduit of light this anchoring 
of light from the earth and from creation, both coming through you, the human, in the here now moment. So it is such a supportive energy. So now as you stand within your sacred space of the heart, we're going to imagine the soul standing before you. And however the soul presents to you, perhaps it is a golden luminescent being, or a sphere of light, or an orb, and you do not have to see, and perhaps you feel, but is simply intending your soul before you, and it puts its hand on your heart, and it activates that sacred heart. So taking in that deep breath, and allowing your soul to activate that sacred heart, that golden fire, that golden light of the heart. Beautiful. With that golden light, you can imagine that being within the heart and you can imagine that light flowing out of the heart and into every cell of the body in between every cell and flowing out into your world this golden fire is a light it is a facet of your soul it is your soul's light an aspect of it a facet this light in itself, you can imagine taking that light from your heart and that golden fire and that golden light and just imagine wrapping up something on the physical, an ache or a pain. Just letting that light just wrap up everything and then just letting it go and allowing your light to do the work. So it is so important, the whole concept of allowing, of surrender. A lot of people don't like the word surrender, but it's not surrendering to something outside of you. It is more along the lines of allowing, allowing your life, your consciousness to come in and do the work as your life, your soul, your consciousness has a higher perspective and understanding of the experience that you're in. And it can come through. And when you work with your light and you allow your light to do whatever's in the highest and best. So let's say you just wrapped up something in the physical and you let it go and you allow your higher consciousness, your soul to do the work that is in your highest and best good. So with the Sacred Heart, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit more activations and attunements. We're going to attune you to the field beyond the mind, the higher mind. We're also going to do a pineal activation. And we're going to do a brain balancing, all with using your light, this golden fire. So again, going into the heart, connected to earth, connected to creation. You are that calm of light that is grounded, connected and in the heart. Imagining that golden fire, that golden light within your heart. Imagining that flowing up to your throat and then right into your pineal gland, right in the middle of the brain. That light, that fire just surrounds the brain and it sets the pineal on fire. Your pineal gland, that little gland right in the center of your brain, your third eye, that antenna, it just lights up on fire, activates.
Next, we're going to do a brain balancing using this golden fire. So as your attention is still there on the pineal gland, right in the middle of the brain, and that pineal gland is just radiating light, that golden fire. Now using your imagination, visualization, intention. Imagine an infinity sign, the figure eight on its side, and it comes out of the pineal, and it goes into both your left and right brain hemispheres. Now imagine that infinity, infinity after infinity, just connecting the left and right brain. Imagination, visualization, attention, allowed. Just imagine those infinities connecting the right brain hemispheres all the way through. Just connecting, opening, balancing. Bring your left and right brain into balance. All the while, that golden fire, that golden light just surrounds the mind and the brain. Now imagine that infinity going upwards to the higher mind, to the quantum mind, the space beyond the human mind. As that infinity goes upwards from the pineal, just imagine floating up into that space, that space beyond the mind. This is where you find that field of universal peace. Now coming back into the body, into the physical heart, and just bringing that field of peace into the body, into every cell of the body. A lot of times as we have anxiety, a lot of that might be the body going through its changes. It just all of the energies. It just causes the body to constrict. So doing this exercise, it just reminds your body that everything is okay. It brings it down here. Would love to hear some feedback on where you were all at. And I know some of you are still having some issues with the sound here. All right. I'll keep the microphone close here. Not sure why we're having some static out there. All right, so <laughs> well, it is interesting that we're having so much static here. And yeah, this isn't like Zoom where people can be chatted or muted. So there is no, um, there's no input from anybody else. I tell you what, let me make sure that all my fans in the background are off. 
You guys can float around here in the heart space for just a moment, please. This is an 1880s building. It's a little chilly today, like I say. So let's see if we can see how you guys like the sound now. Hey, everybody who's on chat here, happy solstice for sure. All right. So now we have all the fans in the background off, so we can see if the silent time is better for us. Okay, so I would like to take a, just a moment and talk about this golden fire and the profundity of it all, which basically, um, gosh, when the golden fire first came in, I gosh, I don't remember how many years ago, five or six, I'm thinking, um, or maybe longer, we, um, when my sister was doing a lot of her energy work, she was simply taking people through and activating the sacred heart, having their soul do it, witnessing that, and then having them wrap things up with that light. And we were seeing really phenomenal, miraculous things occurring with people by simply using from the heart space not only their light, but that light of the sacred heart of that golden fire, that golden light. Um, we used to have, we used to have um, a tensor field generator that we had that will restructure electromagnetics in like a two and a half mile area. And when the 5G millimeter wave first came on in 2018, we had a couple of people that were calling that were saying, well, there's something, you know, your tools aren't working right now. Um, and so when we peeked in, we could see that that 5G millimeter wave was connecting into your electrical system. And then it basically within your electrical, it would simply radiate out that just a reddish, not so good feeling field and energy. And and that's just with the, and this isn't just fifth generation, um, well, fifth generation broadcast transmissions. This was the 5G millimeter wave, um, which is a very limited technology. I don't think they even use it anywhere any, anymore. But when we first found that, that our tools weren't clearing that 5G millimeter wave, we simply brought in that sacred heart into the etheric templates of the tools, um, which, you know, 50 Questions Friday, we talk about this a lot, the templates and such. Um, and once we brought in that golden fire, everything cleared in that household that was using this tensor field generator, because now this tensor field generator, the golden fire generators carried that energy of the sacred heart. And also for years, I was always clearing ghosts and waywards. And I was always trying to find a tool that could clear a ghost because they can have you know, they can have pretty profound effects on a person's um, mental and emotional states. And of course, the energetic. And so with a ghost and a wayward, I could never find a tool that would clear them because you still have to either talk the ghost wayward into going home and open up that connection to source for them, or else you have to bring in their soul to do the work and make that connection between their soul and that ghost wayward. And then their soul simply takes them home. So once this golden fire came in and we put it into the golden fire tools that we create here at Twisted Sage, then within this sphere of influence of this tensor field generator or any of the golden fire tools, it was bringing a remembrance to every being, no matter if they're here in the physical or if they are in other planes, such as a ghost or wayward, 
or any other planes for that matter, it would bring the remembrance of the sacred heart to not only the incarnate being, but to the soul. And so basically it connects a person with their soul. And if they allow, and it's not a conscious thing, you don't, you know, you're not like, well, gosh, I feel like I'm in the golden fire field. I'm going to let my soul activate my heart. Um, it just, it happens. It, it brings that remembrance. And for everybody whose soul deems it to be in the highest and best good, when you come into these fields, the soul comes in and automatically reactivates that sacred heart, that golden flaming heart. So with a ghost or a wayward, when their soul comes in to activate that sacred heart, the soul simply takes that ghost or wayward home. So that's one of the things, well, there's a few of the things that the golden fire can do for us. Um, and of course, this golden fire is something that we're going to be putting into our columns of light that we create here in our class three. Um, because then when you create a column of light, it is bringing through that golden fire field, which will then cross over a ghost or a wayward or anybody who comes into that field, their soul and their body, their human has the remembrance of the sacred heart. In most times it just happens. They reactivate that sacred heart. So that's some of the basics of the golden fire. Now, next we're going to jump into the Merkaba activation. Um, and if anybody has any questions here on the golden fire, um, you're welcome to drop them here on the chat side. But otherwise, like I say, we have a lot of tutorials and videos and activations out there where we go in deep with um, describing and story time with the golden fire energetics. All right. Okay, so here we go. The Merkaba. So the Merkaba is this geometry here. If you ever ordered a product from us, you receive these little um, pamphlets here that talk about the Merkaba. And the Merkaba is simply the star tetrahedron. It is, and that's that's the, the kind of the generic uh, geometry. That's a base geometry for this Merkaba field. And again, we go pretty in depth on the Merkaba and a lot of information on there. We actually have a website called crystalmerkaba.com. Um, and this is the Crystal Merkaba activation. So the Merkaba activation is huge. I've been doing these for um, about 10 years and the people that receive this activation, it's been thousands personally, plus we have all the videos on the website out there. But the people that I witnessed activating the Merkaba, oh, gosh, we even have a, somewhere out on our website, just to say, tensor ring signs. Um, we even have a biofeedback of a person that will walk through the Merkaba activation, and they're all connected to a biofeedback machine. When they activate the Merkaba, it instantly aligns all of their chakras. So this Merkaba activation really is, um, it's a powerful thing to do. And truly, you'll only need to activate the Merkaba one single time, and it is active. And then once we go through the activation process, you can put intentions into this field, and this field will broadcast those intentions. Now, your Merkaba is an electromagnetic field. So there's a lot of people who have issues with EMFs. Just realize that electromagnetics are part of all reality, all physical, and even some perceived non-physical reality is electromagnetic in nature. Our heart is this big electromagnetic generator about six feet across. Every molecule has an electromagnetic field. Um, that's the reason that you have the spirals and sunflowers that spiral out. It is a vortex. It is an electromagnetic field that is creating flows of energy in these toruses. Fields. 
And so the um, so electromagnetics are not bad in nature. So those of you who have you know sensitivities to electromagnetic fields, when you reactivate your Merkava field, you are more powerful in your field than any of those fields out floating around, cell phones, Wi-Fi, towers, whatever it is. You are more powerful than any of those fields. So truly, once you, once you reactivate your Merkaba field, and you put your intentions in there, and you just allow it to transform all fields around you, um, you have no more electrical sensitivities. But as we'll get into further classes, it is still a choice. A choice can be based on fear. We're going to talk a lot more about choices as we move forward into some of your work. But your choice to have an outside influence affect you can override your Merkava field. You can actually override the rules of the field too. We do have a few people who have called and said, well, gosh, I still have my electromagnetic sensitivities. These tools don't work. I've been looking at the tools and they work with the doing everything. It's just that the person has chose that, oh, that Wi Fi is the death or whatever it is, or that's how whatever it is. And then they allow their field to become off center. So, uh, we won't open up that can of worms yet on choice. But just know that your Merkava field, once we do this activation, is a very powerful electromagnetic field, a field of consciousness as well. And it is something that is connected to the physical body. It is something that is innately ours to own because it is connected to the physical human body. And with this Merkava field, is for most all of us adults, it went offline. It was functioning the whole time we were in our mother's womb, after we were born, sometime after that process, maybe within 48 hours, maybe as you are a toddler, and the public field just stopped functioning. It just, the, the energetics, the space being held by the earth and by everything at the time was not conducive to have a field functioning. But those who you did find with a functioning public field still as an adult, was just this something different about that person. They were more connected than anybody. Now, as I've activated fields for people throughout these years, there are so many people that give me feedback on shifting in their perception and awareness, whether they can now read or they can see energy, um, see auras. It brings you connected more into the heart, and it brings more of your gifts online. So anyway, we're going to jump right in and do this Merkaba activation. It used to be a process that could take a year to create a fully functional field where you had to do meditations, breath work, and mudras every day in order to make this field stay fully functional. Right now is the time that the earth, the cosmos, the energies are holding space for all for us all to step in and simply and easily reactivate the Merkaba. So it is your soul again that does the work, your higher consciousness. And let's just jump right into the activation. Um, a couple other quick things to a couple other quick things to learn is um, I'm sorry, I'm just checking over here on chat. It sounds like there's still some issues with sound, and gosh, my apologies. Yeah, because we do 50 questions Friday all the time, and I usually don't have the mic this close even, and, and we, <laughs> we don't have issues. But uh, anyway, here we go. Um, the Merkaba, just a couple more things to, to know about the Merkaba before we step into the activation, is that you can simply use this as a visualization reference for your imagination. So this field, it's this eight-pointed star that's around you, and 
and it's not necessarily going to be an eight point of star there's potentials and possibilities for all these different geometries in Merkaba but we simply visualize that eight point of star um, just for our own reference and visualization now this geometry around the body it's like one hand above the head one hand below the feet is the tip of it and the other tips are just right outside of your outstretched arms gosh yeah i'm still trying to figure out our sound here <laughs> all right so I'll walk you through this activation process and basically we're going to go into the heart space again and we're going to simply what we're going to do is we're going to invite in your soul to do this activation so once we go into the heart space and we're going to just simply take a deep breath in and go we used to call it popping the Merkaba your field will just pop right out of the heart and it will surround you and it will be spinning um again crystalmercaba.com has a lot of the specifics if you want to get heady about all the stuff but we're just going to go ahead and jump into the heart space and reactivate that Merkaba, and then we'll start to put in our own intentions to be held and amplified within that Merkaba field so here we go putting again your awareness to your heart Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light and energy of the earth. Connecting heart to heart to creation, source, soul, creator, God, breathing in that light into the heart. Third breath, connecting to both earth and creation, breathing in that light, becoming grounded, connected in your heart space as a column of light. Again, inviting in your soul from within the heart, we're going to take in a deep breath and we're going to blow out and we're just going to pop that geometry, that Merkaba field out around you. So here we go. Deep breath in. Beautiful. Just watching everybody's fields are spinning. Everything seems harmonious. And if you feel a little bit off kilter, you know who you are. Taking another deep breath from Earth and creation. Beautiful. There we all are. All fields are spinning from this space within the heart we can put intentions into this Merkaba field I will share some of the intentions that I like to put into mine and then you can add all of your own intentions one intention I like to put into my field is that I am always guided guarded and protected Another intention is that I have clear communication and understanding with my higher soul self, with my soul. Another intention that I like to put into my field is that I am impervious to electromagnetics and to all dense energies, that I become a transformer of light that is anything comes into my field that is not harmonious that I harmonize all energies and that is so powerful knowing that your Merkaba field harmonizes all energies that come into your field so no more perceived outside influence rocking your boat throughout these times we're going to go more internal and clearing the internal which rocks our boats so at this time you can add whatever other intentions 
you wish into your field. And if your intentions are coming from the human through the needs, um, fear, necessity, survival, things like that, only what is in the highest and greatest good will be held and broadcast and amplified through your Merkaba. And again, it is your soul that is always in charge here. So you can place whatever intentions you wish and only in the highest and best will be amplified and broadcast. So this Merkaba field actually extends out in about a 50 foot disc all around you. So you affect a lot of people as you walk out into the world. Okay, so you can always go back at any time and add more intentions into this field. You can go back at any time that you feel like you have just, um, like you have a lot of sticky energy on you in your field or you're just off kilter. Um, you know, whatever it is that you're perceiving, you can go back into the heart space and re redo this meditation to where you go into the heart and you simply pop that Merkaba out around your field again. And when you do, again, it aligns, balances, and clears your field. So one of our video tutorials, that's what we talk about, is just simply using your Merkaba to clear your field. So there is a lot to this Merkaba. Um, so question is the star tetrahedron or is it a disc so the merkaba field you have the star tetrahedron which is the eight pointed star it's a base geometry it used to be the base geometry of earth of her merkaba was an eight pointed star in about 2015 she made a temporary shift into a 12 pointed star um and that was only a temporary i'm not sure where she's at now but i have a feeling here within a couple of months Three months she's going to be totally different in her fields and so with you again simply using this star tetrahedron as your visualization of that geometry right around you people can have multiple geometries around them i see people who work with metatron have like a 64 pointed star around them and that one is about 21 feet across so there is the star which is just right around your body right up uh, one tip above your head below your feet right beyond your fingertips but then you're also a column of light grounded connected you are also a disc shaped flying saucer like a you know like the old style flying saucer where it's a, a sphere in the center and it tapers out as it goes out that's the disc that i'm speaking of that's about um dreamville melchizedek and the work that he did he's the first one who brought the Merkaba back into awareness through Thoth. Um, and he talked about it being 55 feet across this disc. And that's what we saw too with that. Though you can expand and contract that field through intent. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, it's making me cry and I'm not sad. Um, yes, uh, it's, whew, I tell you, it is so powerful because this helps reconnect us to more of our divinity. And that's truly what this class is about. It is about us reconnecting into who we are as a being of light, as a creator being of light on this planet. Um, and we're going to be having a lot of uh, discussions and tools here like when we do the the light anchors um so i'll just give a quick concept of the light anchors that we're going to be going into and that is um well actually i'm not <laughs> we'll give too many details we do have again another website dedicated to creating light anchors um 
and actually December 26th of 2012 will be, this is our 10 year anniversary coming up here on Monday of, of creating the global love and gratitude grid with these columns of light. These columns of light you can put into cell phone towers and basically you take that cell phone tower and the transmissions and you harmonize the transmissions Plus, you bring in the frequencies of love and gratitude onto that field. So then your cell phone tower then becomes a transmitter of beneficial energies. You can use these columns of light into, um, you know, denser places, physical places like old haunted houses or graveyards or wherever, schools, um, ERs, wherever you put these columns of light, then they will change the energetics of that space. They'll cross over the ghost way words. They'll bring more of that remembrance and that connection and that activation of the golden fire to the people that come into that space or the way words or the entities, whoever. Um, the next session that we do here, I believe next week, but if you uh, be sure to sign up for our, um, our email, which is the, uh, when you go to sign up for the light workers um, Academy, if you sign up for that email, we'll send out an email whenever we're going to do the uh, to do the Wednesday sessions. And so be sure to sign up for the email. It's on our website at twistedsage.com. Um, and you go to the bottom of the page and there at the bottom of the page is the blog, the Lightworkers Academy. And that is where you can sign up for the emails to receive the notification of this next um, session. So in our next session, um, we're going to be doing a lot more of the work for us. We're going to be doing a lot of the clearing work, bringing in more of our light and our essence in. It's going to be our next step. And then we're going to be working with the wisdom fields. Now, these wisdom fields are something that we're also going to be putting into these columns of light because these fields are going to be the ones that begin to clear away all of the eons of debris that we carry with us and it's going to turn that into wisdom light and consciousness and it is going to make our soul shine brighter by that work that we do of transforming of alchemizing experience into wisdom and light and so next week or our next session is going to be about the wisdom about consciousness and light and transforming all of your creation more into light and consciousness. So then when we go to our third class and we begin to anchor columns of light, we'll be able to put that energy, all those potentials and possibilities into those columns of light. So you can do basic light columns, but we're gonna wait until our third session to where we can bring in all of these different energies into those columns. I'll just see, just going to a question here. So can this be used to journey to other realms? Um, heard of the Telos Lemurians using the Merkaba to shift to other spaces. How can we do this? So yes, the Merkaba is known as a vehicle. Um, you know, even here on our little card, it talks about, um, you know, it says how the Zulu, there's a tribe in Zulu who say that they came here. Um, there's a legend that the entire tribe had come from another dimension here on Earth using the Merkaba. Um, you know, the Merkaba has, it's so unknown. I tell you what, after I started mapping out different Merkaba fields around people and and everything else, I went to Thoth and I was like, okay, I want to write a book on Merkabas. And he just laughed and said, you haven't even scratched the surface. So the Merkaba and it's the possibilities and potentials that it carries for beings in all different realms is fantastic. Yes, supposedly you can totally use your Merkaba to shift the physical body into other dimensions, spaces, places, times. So that is something that I know is going to come someday that I really feel that we're going to be able to start to do these more fantastic things with our Merkaba as this entire um, gravity of the planet 
lifts, as this veil lifts, as we become more, more connected um, to our own true creatorship, which is what this is about. You know, we try not to go too woo woo or new agey or anything like that with all this. Um, it's more about connecting to your true essence, to your light, and to opening up all of your creator abilities. And it's because that it, it's the time and, and today on the 21st of December here in the Northern Hemisphere, it is, you know, the long, the shortest day of the year. And it's, um, and I, I feel like it's kind of like one of the darkest times um, that we're, you know, it, it's the whole concept is darkest before the dawn. And I tell you what, the dawn is coming fast. It really is. I really feel that we're stepping into a whole new everything. So, you know, I, I guess I, I talk a lot in our 50 Questions Fridays and in workshops and everything like that about how everything that we've done up to this point has been about soul growth and learning. That we've been here on this planet for eons and we go through this thing with our soul families in the name of experience, of experience which then gets transferred into into consciousness, into wisdom, into light, which is just simply a part of the expansion of creation. We have creation and then we have soul and then we have soul that comes out into all of these incarnations across this entire universe and duality. And right now is where everything is coming together here at zero point. Zero point is actually what we're going to be doing at the end of next week or of our next session is this zero point space of the soul where we're going to bring in all that we are as a soul throughout its entire manifestation creation um, as as different incarnations and we're going to bring all of that in as wisdom and light to align right here and now um, because right here and now is so important here on this planet in that we have shifted from this whole concept of soul growth and learning to stepping into something new. We're stepping into our creatorship now. And that is really why I was guided to bring this whole, um, this whole workshop series right here and now is because 2023, we are stepping into some really phenomenal jet streams of consciousness where we are going to be expanding so quickly and so this is just simply a bridge between where we're going and where where we've been at for eons and so i really feel like this um this lightworkers workshop is simply this little bridge space to help us to get to here quicker to this beautiful jet stream and we're going here anyway um the purpose of this is just to make things smoother and easier because as we do the work for ourselves, we affect all of creation. We are all connected to the mass consciousness grid. We all are connected to our soul families, um, somewhat still. And we all run into other people in our lives, which we affect. And so that's really where, you know, I see this whole wildfire of, you know, the sacred heart activation, the Merkaba activation, um, this field of, of wisdom that we're going to work at next session is is that whenever we come into the field of somebody else that it begins to affect them that it spreads like wildfire and it is simply the expansion of consciousness it is the opening up of the remembering of, of everything um so anyway that's that's kind of you know some of the underlying intentions of, of what i want to do here um with the class so anyway, um, yeah, please do sign up so that you can join us next time. Because again, next time we're going to be going into, um, we'll, we'll be able to do questions here uh, next time too on anything that comes up here over this next week or so. Um, so we'll start with questions and answers next week, next session. But then we're going to do the divine earth alchemy, where we're going to be doing the trinity breath and connecting in more with the earth to do the clearing work. And we're going to be bringing in you as creator. This is huge. 
Um, then we're going to work on the uh, connecting to the chalice energetics and duality and working with that whole concept, which will then lead us into this whole concept of you becoming a transformative field of wisdom. Uh, just to kind of give you a preview, this is our wisdom wands. And this field is basically where I'm wanting to take us all to where this is actually connected to the golden light rod, which is what we use to anchor columns of light that it energetic is in here as well. And this, this holds a space of transformation of taking all experience and bringing it into wisdom. So next, next session is going to go pretty deep. Um, and it's usually the things that we only do live in workshops, which we're going to be doing a lot of that here in the future. But anyway, I will let you guys all go. I will stop talking here. And um, gosh, yeah, I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful expansion of light over the next week or two um, here in the Northern Hemisphere, where today is the shortest day of the year. And um, yeah, much love, you guys. Thank you for being here. And we'll see you next time. All right. Take care.